Welcome, welcome, welcome to Probe um, Virtual College Fair this evening. We have a great lineup of institutions for you to hear from this evening. And what a cool way to learn about um, five schools in 45 minutes. So I have a couple of housekeeping items to take care of you, take care of for you this evening. First of all, this is a webinar. So your camera and your microphones are turned off. Our panelists cannot see or hear you. Um, Secondly, uh, this is recorded tonight, and so you'll be able to get a playback of this recording within a week um, at that same website where you registered, so strivescan.com slash probe. And lastly, these colleges are going to have great information for you, but they are going to go fast. And so if you have questions, and we know that you will, please put those questions in the Q&A at the bottom of your screen. Type out your question and then also indicate which college you're directing your question to so that they can appropriately respond. So without further ado, let's get started, guys. Um, you first are going to have the opportunity to hear from South Georgia State College. Hello, everyone. So sorry, um, but welcome. I'm so happy to have part of your Tuesday night. We are South Georgia State College. Megan, um, I'm sorry to interrupt. You just want to click on um, display settings and swap um, swap presentation mode because we can see your notes. Oh, goodness. I'm so sorry. That's OK. This is there you go. There you go. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you so much for telling me. Okay, well, we are South Georgia State College, um, the right college, the right choice for you. Um, we are an open access test optional two and four year institution within the University System of Georgia. Um, from the 159 total Georgia counties, we do have students from 111 of them, as well as from 18 different states and four foreign countries. Um, our residential campus is here in Douglas. We also have a commuter campus in Waycross and an entry program on the VSU campus in Valdosta. Our requirements for admission is a 2.0 GPA. Like I said, we are an open access institution. Um, we do accept SAT and ACT and AccuPlacer scores, but like I said, we are test optional. So as long as you have that 2.0 GPA, then you have met the biggest requirement there is for admission. These are our associate transfer pathways. Um, depending on how you're viewing this, um, this slideshow, you can either take a screenshot or a picture of the screen um, so that you can see everything we offer. It is also on our website. This is in terms of two-year programs. Are the four-year programs that we offer, the Bachelor of Science in Bi uh, Biological Sciences, there are two tracks within that, the Nature and Ecology and Pre-Professional. The Bachelors of Science in Management, we have FinTech, Marketing and Organizational Behavior, you can go in. Um, we have our Bachelors of Science in Public, Public Service Leadership, our Bachelors of Science in Nursing, Bachelor of Science in Long-Term Healthcare Management, Bachelors of Science in Elementary and Special Education, so that's a dual degree, um, Bachelor of Art in Professional Business and Technical Writing, and then coming this upcoming fall, we will have the Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering Technology, so we're very excited about that. Um, this is a layout of our suite style resident residence hall dorm rooms. So um, if you did decide to come live at our residential campus in Douglas, this is the layout. So you see you and your one roommate each have your own room. Um, the only thing you actually share is your bathroom and your sink area. So you can lock the door, go home for the weekend, whatever you need to do and that you do not have the distraction of wondering what happened in your room, anything like that. We want you to not have any type of unnecessary distractions, be able to go to class and worry about class. And as you can see, um, of course, there is laundry and vending inside the residence halls, as well as free Wi-Fi in the residence halls and as well in all the buildings on campus. We specialize in small class sizes, so there is an average of 26 people per class, so it's the same personalized experience that you are used to in high school. 
Um, we do have over 20 student organizations and clubs. However, if there's something that we do not have currently, um, it only takes 10 like-minded students to make their own registered club. So you can get together, um, make your own club that way. And we also have eight sports teams. We have men and women swimming, men and women's cross country, men's basketball, women's soccer, baseball, and softball um, that we welcome you to either participate in or support because as, a, as you are a South Georgia State College, you are in, admitted into all the games with your student ID for free. This is our um, estimated cost of attendance. Um, this is just a way of showing you that our tuition is $95 a credit hour. Um, and this is a breakdown if you had a 15 credit hour schedule. If you haven't done your FAFSA yet, the code is right here at the bottom, 001592. You can add up to 10 schools to your FAFSA. So just make sure South Georgia State College is one of them. That way we have your information. If you are worried about um, or if you are interested in any type of scholarships with us, um, we, of course, accept scholarships that you get um, you know, through your high school or state like that, like, um, like the Hope Scholarship, but we also, through South Georgia State College, offer the Foundation Scholarship you see at the top for Douglas Campus, and then the Dye Foundation Scholarship at the bottom for the Waycross Campus. And we'd love to see, we'd love to be able to show you more. Um, so if you would like to go to sgsc.edu back, uh, backslash visit, you can schedule an in-person socially distanced tour of four people or less for Douglas or Waycross. Or if you just like a bird's eye view, you can go to our website and um, register for a virtual tour. We'd love to see you there as well. This is the recruitment team's information. Um, our director of the other two recruiters and myself, Megan Day. Um, this is everything you need to get a hold of us, office, sale, and then our emails. And we, anything that you wanna know, we are happy to help you with that. And this is just to show you our website. It is sgsc.edu. Um, be sure to follow us on social media. You see our Instagram, our Twitter, and then the student ambassadors have a TikTok as well. And if you use the hashtag WingsUpSGSC, you may even see some of your content socialed on one of our social media platforms. Thank you so much for all your time and attention. And I look forward to hearing from you soon. Bye, guys. Thanks, Megan, to you in South Georgia State College. Um, no next, problem. <laughs> next up, I have the pleasure to introduce to you the University of Georgia. All right, that was easier when we practiced. I apologize. Hey, good evening, everyone. My name is Susan Bias, and I am a regional admissions officer here with the University of Georgia, and I'm pleased to be your presenter here this evening. We have a short time together, so I want to cover a little bit about some highlights of the University of Georgia and then share a little bit about the application process. So let's get started. Um, the University of Georgia is the first start for first star state chartered institution in the United States, uh, founded in 1785, making us the birthplace of public higher education in America. Located 90, 90 or so miles northeast of Atlanta, uh, we're located in Athens, Georgia. And um, it is the, it is a, it's known for its music scene. It's a quintessential college town. Um, it's creative, it's entrepreneurial, it's athletic and healthy and inclusive, and it has a really fun welcoming vibe. North Campus abuts uh, downtown, so it's easily accessible for coffee, shopping, or just hanging out. Susan, do you know that we can't see your screen? Oh, I'm so sorry. Don't worry, I just didn't want you to get too far. Oh my gosh. Okay, hang on, let me try again, and I will um, let me go. Hang on. There, is that better? Yes, perfect, there you oh, go. Oh, I apologize. What a mess. Well, here's the first one that you missed. Well, anyway, we'll go from there. It was a picture of the arch. I apologize. Gosh, technology. Okay, um, so UGA is a flagship institution um, of the state. It's comprised of 17 schools and colleges, as well as a graduate school, law school, um, college of vet med, and a pharmacy school. 
We offer 200 plus majors, minors, and certificates. And while 80% of our undergraduate students hail from the state of Georgia, our first class um, is welcomed by uh, students from all 50 states and 140 different countries. Um, that first year class is typically made up about 5,800 students. Our students are exposed to a world-class faculty and can create an academic experience that meets their needs and wants while interacting with students from both similar and different backgrounds than their own. Um, I'm gonna cover up, we have lots of, of great programs, but I'll hit uh, highlight just two for you this evening. And the first one is our experiential learning program. And the second is our double dogs. So first experiential learning, UGA was the first large public institution to require experiential learning for all of our graduates. And this includes research, study abroad, internships, service learning, and co-ops. So it's a kind of hands-on learning that takes what students learn in the classroom and then applies them to real life. Second is our Double Dogs Accelerate Degree Program. And this offers students an opportunity to um, earn an undergraduate degree as well as a bachelor's degree in a five-year period of time. Now, while 4-1 programs are not uncommon, the sheer volume of what ours offers is really astounding, especially we have not had this program very long. So um, students can study in an area that's applicable to their choice. They may have something that they're um, studying in, a, in their major. So like if they're an undergraduate degree in journalism and they want to get a master's degree in that same college in emerging media, that can work nicely. Uh, other ones are a little more creative. We have lots of our engineers in our College of Engineering will go on and get their MBA at the Terry College of Business. So lots of options. They can get creative and have experiences that are really unique to them. All right, so a little bit about the application process. Uh, our application opens on September 1st. Uh, and so your senior year, that would be an opportunity to invite you to apply. We offer two different deadlines. We have an early action deadline and a regular decision deadline. Um, the materials that are needed are listed here on the screen and they are exactly the same for both um, deadlines. We use a whole student approach to our review process. So we're looking at students both academically, um, their grades, their rigor, and potentially their standardized test scores. I don't know how that will be for next year and also holistically. So this means we're looking at students' extracurricular activities, their involvement over time, their leadership, their creativity, um, their responsibilities in the home, their maturity and their integrity. And this, um, having demonstrated this involvement helps us understand a little bit more about what the student might be like when they join us at UGA. So these numbers here before you are middle 50 percentiles. And so these are represent the students who were admitted for the class uh, fall of 2020. And when you see numbers like them, these they're intended to be guidelines. So these are not minimums and they're not guarantees. These are um, intended to be guidelines as you go and look forward and compare your academic profile with the different institutions that you are considering. So um, do know that and these numbers for next year will be available in, um, in August. All right, so a little bit about scholarships. Um, this, our application for admissions doubles as a scholarship application for merit-based aid. Um, and so with the exception of a foundation fellowship, which is our premier and all-inclusive scholarship, students do not have to make a separate one. Um, students must apply early action for the foundation fellowship, and that one has a deadline of November 1st. We encourage all students to submit the FAFSA, Free Application for Federal Student Aid, and it is used by our Office of Student Financial Aid for need-based and merit-based awards. I always also recommend for students to apply for external scholarships because those can be used wherever you choose to attend college. With our dates and deadlines, as I mentioned, early action, these are students who are happy with their application and they're ready to have it evaluated in the fall. So that's an October the 15th deadline. Foundation Fellow, again, submitted by November the 1st. Our FAFSA deadline, um, our priority deadline is December the 15th. And then regular decision is January the 1st. And so those are for students who prefer to maybe um, share a little bit more about their first semester activities, work a little bit more on their essays. And again, that's January 1. So really by the 1st of April, you should have all of your um, admissions decisions in hand, scholarships and financial aid packages, and have really a month to balance what are my academic opportunities versus my financial responsibilities. May 1 is a national commitment deadline and it is a firm deadline for us. So that is when your commitment deposit is due should you choose to enroll at University of Georgia. 
Again, I'm sorry about the technology. I want to thank you for being here. Um, I'd like to personally invite you to come and visit campus. Um, we offer currently virtually a campus visit experience, and that is a more in-depth admissions information session and tours uh, with our student tour leaders. Um, I hope in the near future we'll be able to invite you to campus, um, but the virtual opportunity gives you a great chance to learn more about UGA and, um, and see campus through a student's eyes. Um, if you have un unanswered questions, things that you want to ask a little bit later on, you're welcome to email us at apply at uga.edu and any of our staff um, will be happy to assist you. Again, thank you for listening. And um, next up, I believe it's the University of Utah. Thanks. Thank you so much, Susan, to you and the University of Georgia. Guys, aren't you having fun? This is a great way to see so many awesome schools. Um, don't forget to put those questions in the uh, Q&A. Next up, I have the privilege of introducing to you the University of Utah. All righty, thank you so much, Courtney. My name is Alexandra. I am one of the admissions counselors here at the University of Utah. Um, I always like to start off with a picture of campus because I think our campus sells itself just with those mountain views. Um, but as you can see, we do have a pretty large campus here. So a little bit about the University of Utah. Uh, we are located in Salt Lake City. I know a lot of you probably aren't super familiar with Utah, but um, we are the capital in the capital city, Salt Lake City here in Utah. And we are conveniently located only 10 minutes by bus from downtown. So our students enjoy a lot of nightlife. They enjoy um, our very own NBA jazz team. I know maybe you're a Hawks fan, but you can definitely see the Hawks when they come out here. Um, we've got tons of shopping and some great food and other things that you can do out here in the city. We're also super close to those mountains. They really are as close as they look. So a lot of our students enjoy outdoor activities, whether that's hiking, mountain biking, um, maybe you've always wanted to learn how to ski. We offer that as a class on our campus. So we're super close to that. Like within 30 minutes, you can be up in the mountains, which is super nice. So a little bit about our campus. Like I said, our main campus is in Salt Lake City. But we do have a second smaller campus that is growing right now in South Korea. So that is another option if you're interested in maybe studying in South Korea. Our campus is 24,000 undergraduate students strong. And we have even more if you include our law school, our medical school, um, or any of our graduate programs, really. We have a 17 to 1 student to faculty ratio right now, which means that on average, our class size is about 23 students per class. That's not to say you won't still have those freshman lecture um, hall style classes. You'll still have a few of those. But when you get into your major, really, your classes are going to be cut down to that 23 students. So you get to know your professor and your fellow students. So you can have an interactive classroom. We are an R1 or Research One University, um, and we are also the flagship out here, meaning that we can go ahead and offer research in every single field that we offer across campus. Um, everything from our ballet and modern dance majors to our science and medical sciences majors, as well as engineering. And with that being said, we do have over 150 different academic programs for you to choose from, which means that there's no limits. We're a partner institution of the PAC-12, so we are one of the 12 schools that is in the Pacific Athletic Conference. This means that we also do offer tons of great sports and activities like football. We also have actually the number one most attended women's sporting event in the nation in our Women's Red Rocks Gymnastics, which is so cool to see. It's packed almost every single meet that they have. However, a lot of students aren't aware when you join an athletic conference, you're not just joining athletics, you're also joining and signing on to say that you have great academics. So for us, this means our academics are up to par with all of our Pac-12 institutions like Stanford, UCLA, um, University of Arizona, or any of those institutions that you might be considering. As far as admissions, we are also a holistic admissions school. We do consider your primary factors to be academic performance because at the end of the day, you are a student here, but we're also asking you what else is going on outside the classroom. Um, we ask you to share involvement opportunities if you're working part-time or any like odd off the wall um, things that happen. We've seen students that have concussions. It, it happens, we get that. 
We do um, offer our application on the Common App, and we do have two early action deadlines each year. So um, I always recommend students applying by our early action deadlines because then you're automatically considered for our merit scholarships as well. And then as of this year, we are test optional, so we do not require a test. You can still submit one if you'd like, but we do not require ACT or SAT to be submitted in order for you to be admitted and also to be considered for merit scholarships. I know a lot of students are really worried about affordability when they're looking at out-of-state institutions, but hopefully this will put your mind at ease. The U offers $98.3 million in scholarships every single year. So divide that between like what? 23,000 students, that's a lot of money for all of our students to, um, to have. We offer both merit and need-based scholarships, um, and we do have the second easiest residency program in the nation. So this is really great. You only have to be a student for one year to gain residency and therefore pay in-state tuition. So you're only really paying an out-of-state student at that rate for one year. And we do encourage all of our students to apply for FAFSA, and that's how we consider you for any of our need-based scholarships as well. So I went through that really fast, sorry y'all, but um, we are currently offering virtual tours. And when I say virtual tours, we actually have both video, like you can watch a quick tour around campus, but also our ambassadors are doing live virtual tours. So they're actually like taking you around campus um, in a presentation so that you can still get that experience of interacting with students. This is all my contact information. I am the admissions counselor for Georgia, so feel free to reach out to me anytime. Thank y'all so much. Go Utah. Thanks so much, Alexandra and the University of Utah. Next up, I have the pleasure of introducing to you Gwinnett Technical College. All right, thank you so much for that warm introduction. We're just gonna go ahead and get our presentation up. I also have on the line my colleague Camilla Bowles. She's also going to be in the chat box while we go through this presentation. Thank you so much for joining Gwinnett Technical College today. We um, have the pleasure of introducing our college. We are founded or located in Georgia. We have two locations, which is the Alpharetta location and the Lawrenceville ca campus. I am the recruiter for the Alpharetta lo location and my colleague Camilla is the recruiter for the Lawrenceville campus. So now that we're all warmed up, let's get ready to go. Now, as I mentioned before, Gwinnett Technical College, we have two locations. And as a student at Gwinnett Tech, you are not restricted to take classes on either campus. You can take campus in between, all in between, whatever you wanna do. If there's an English class on our Alpharetta campus and you wanna take that there, you can do so. And if you wanna take a math class at our Lawrenceville campus, you are free to do so as well. Now at Gwinnett Technical College, we are an accredited institution. And this is very important when you're looking at schools because one, it helps with your future employer. Two, it helps as far as offering you both state and federal financial aid. And three, your core credits are guaranteed to transfer over to any four-year institution in the system of Georgia and any technical college in the system of Georgia. You have nothing to worry about. As I mentioned before, Gwinnett Tech is an accredited institution. We're backed by SACS, which is the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools. Now, anyone knows, in order for you to be successful, you gotta use your resources, right? And at Gwinnett Tech, we have a plethora of resources at your disposal. So as you can see, we have a few of them placed here on this slide, our Veteran Affairs, your Career Service Center, Disability Services, and let's just pause here, right here, Enrollment Advisors. We all know that these people are key to your success at Gwinnett Tech and at any other college because one, they answer your questions in regards to your program of study, they answer your questions as far as what classes you, you should take, or if you're just confused about FAFSA, they are there to assist you. Now at Gwinnett Tech, we have over 140 programs of study and they're mostly high in demand. We are a technical college, so we prepare you to enter into the work field. So if you're, inter if you're interested in a lot of our health life science programs, we have those there for you at your disposal. 
Now let's talk about how easy is how easy it is to get started because I know that it is a pressing question for you and you're like, hey, how do I get over to Gwinnett Tech, right? Well, first you're going to apply and you pay a $25 application fee. And as you can see, we have the link here for you, gwinnetttech.edu, enrollment apply. Next, you're gonna submit all of your residency documents. So that's just simply a copy of your photo ID, so your state ID, your driver's license, or your permanent residency card. You're just gonna take a picture of it front and back and submit it to admissions docs at gwinnetttech.edu. Gwinnett Next, we'll need you to submit all of your additional documents and your official transcripts. Now, we all know that in order for transcripts to be considered officials, they either have to be sent electronically or if you choose to send them, send them by hard copy, do not open the transcript because as soon as you open it, that transcript it is void. So we highly encourage students to send it electronically, but if you can't, you can always mail it to Gwinnett Tech or hand deliver it. Now, tuition and fees at Gwinnett Tech is amazing. I mean, our in-state students pay $100 per credit, our out-of-state students pay $200 per credit, and our foreign students pay $400 per credit. That's just the tuition piece. Our fees are a flat fee of $418 per semester. Now, if you need a complete breakdown of our tuition and fees by credit, feel free to go to our website and take note of the link that you see here on this slide. Here are a few important dates and deadlines when it comes to our fall registration. May 10th is the 2021-2022 FAFSA filing deadline. June 11th is the 2021-2022 financial aid document submission deadline. July 1st is the application file completion deadline for our priority registration. We highly encourage you to shoot for this priority deadline. This gives you time to be able to submit all the documents that you may need. But we also have a late deadline of July 14th. Now, once you have been accepted to Gwinnett Tech, we highly encourage you to sign up for a new student orientation session. Now, August 9th is when fall classes begin. And November 12th is, excuse me, November 20th is when fall classes begin or end. Now, Camilla and I, we left this for the final session. We want to hook you up and pay for your application fee. So feel free to take note of this code CV19. Again, that's CV19 to waive your application fee. Again, we provided our information um, on this last slide. So if you have any additional concerns or questions when applying to Gwinnett Tech, feel free to email us or you can download our QList app, which is Q is in quarter, L is in lamb, E is in elephant, S is in Sam, S is in Sam, QList. And feel free to sign up to take a virtual tour on either campus or to make it a, a make a personal um a personal, <laughs> you threw me off, Courtney, <laughs> but just to make a personal appointment to speak to either recruiter. We're so grateful that you took this time to be a part of this session. We can't wait for you to join our Gwinnett Tech family. Thank you so much and have a great day. Patricia, I wouldn't have known that I threw you off. You did a great job. And thanks Wait. so much to you and oh, Gwinnett no, Technical too College. too much time. <laughs> <laughs> You're totally fine. Our final presentation tonight will be from the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga. Hi, my name is Terrence Banks, and I'm with the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga. So I go ahead and get straight into it. A couple of things I cover in this presentation is our campus, classrooms, a couple of popular buildings on our campus, and our housing. So in terms of size, UTC is a mid-sized institution with a little bit under 12,000 students on our campus. The fun thing about UTC is that the university feels separate from the city, although Chattanooga, the university is located near downtown Chattanooga. Again, there is a distinction between the city and the campus, so it's super important to highlight that difference. In terms of getting into the classroom, our admission requirements are 2.85 with at least 18 on the ACT or 2.5 with at least a 21. If you meet those admission requirements, you are automatically admitted to the institution. And these are our traditional application requirements. 
So with the traditional application, you do not have to submit resumes, letters of recommendation, or anything of the sort. All we need is your official transcripts and test scores, and you are good to go. Our average class size is about 25. Our student to teacher ratio is 21 to one. So you'd have to get to know your professors quite well in the process. And to help our students get acclimated to campus life and improve their networking, we do offer over 150 different student organizations, anything from religious groups, honor societies, fraternities and sorority sports clubs, and anything in between. On the off chance that we do not have a program to interest you, just let us know. We'll be happy to bring that program to campus for you. New this year, we do have a test optional application process. So if students apply as test optional, there is no requirement for you to submit your test scores. All we need is your official transcript with a minimum GPA of a 3.0 or higher and a letter of recommendation and you're good to go. One of our most popular buildings on our campus is our library. Naturally it has books in it, so I won't go into too much detail about that piece, but we, just, we have just about any kind of technology you think you'll need. VCRs, if people still know what those are. You can check out DVDs, DVD players, laptops, video cameras, voice recorders. We'll even let you borrow a phone charger. Your best friend will even let you borrow a phone charger. So understand that UTC has your back. Also our technology is so up to date. We have a green screen room for you to record a presentation or the coolest YouTube channel. Or if you're interested in music, you can make a mixtape on our campus free of charge. But everybody's favorite thing is perhaps the Starbucks, which is located on the first floor. The next building is our university center, which is the heart of campus. Everything that happens outside of the classroom has to flow through our university center. That includes food. So we have places like Chick-fil-A, Moe's, Witch Witch, Panda Express, and of course a convenience store located in our food court. And I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about fitness after mentioning food. So in our aquatics and rec recreational center, we do offer fitness classes, one-on-one -on -one training. We have a physical therapy department. We do body pump, yoga, and we have a miniature indoor water park with a two-story water slide. The next piece I'd like to mention are housing options. UTC housing is pretty awesome. It's a huge part of why I moved from Memphis and decided to attend the university. Three out of our 10 complexes are more traditional in the sense that you share a bedroom with someone, but your bathroom is still located in your apartment. And seven out of our 10 housing options are completely apartment style, so you can get your own bedroom. So when you get tired of hearing your roommates run them out, close the door, problem solved. And really quickly, I just wanted to highlight a couple of important things. Um, if you're planning to attend UTC this fall, then we definitely want you to make sure you register for orientation sooner rather than later. Submit your housing application and make sure your FAFSA information is completed. And our scholarship opportunities are first come, first served. Outside of that, that's my university in a nutshell. I appreciate your time. Parents, thank you so much to you and the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga. I'd now like to invite all of the panelists tonight to turn back on their cameras and share some of their great expert advice with our um, audience. So uh, let's see here, sorry. Um, what advice would you share with someone going through the college search process? Many of those on the line tonight are juniors, um, we might have a couple of seniors, but mostly juniors and their families. So we'll go round robin in the order that you presented. And so that would be South Georgia State College up first. Well, Terrence, how about we start with you? I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. My buttons were covered up. <laughs> Go ahead, Megan. Um, well, uh, the, the campus tradition that we enjoy here the most would be definitely going out in Sweetheart Circle. Um, that is historically what we've always done. Um, since 1906, the big campus, the big, um, what's it called? The fountain in the middle of campus is in the middle of what we call Sweetheart Circle. And that's where, um, you, before it was the co-ed dorms, the male dorms and female dorms would all come and find their sweetheart and do picnics and stuff. So we love chilling in Sweetheart Circle. I love that tradition. So let's switch our question to what tradition or fun fact would you like to share about your institution? So University of Georgia up second. Um, I think my favorite, well, there's so many campus traditions, but um, my, my favorite one is it, it, the football games. When, before the game starts, there's the lone trumpeter in the Northwest corner of the stadium and the whole stadium is quiet 
and this one trumpet starts and plays the beginning of the Battle Hymn of the Republic, and it is just it's silence and it just it, every you think you get tired of it but every time you have it there's just it just gets the you know the hair on your arms and then of course all the the videos and the hype start but there's so many great ones uh but that that's my favorite um because it never gets old all right oh you're muted courtney <laughs> yep university of utah there you go <laughs> all right so for us i mean same as susan we have so many different traditions, but um, I will also go with a football tradition. So on third downs in football, um, our entire stadium and student section does what we call the third down jump. And it's exactly what it sounds like. They jump up and down like crazy uh, on the third down. And we also have seismographs on campus and it registers every single time as an earthquake on campus, which is so weird and insane, but goes to show you our students are really are groundbreaking. Hey, that's really fun and no pun intended, right? <laughs> Gwinnett Technical College. Thank you for asking us. So because we are a technical college, we have a lot of hands-on things. So I know that as a new recruiter, um, we have like these assimilation rooms where our health life science programs get to practice in. So one of my favorite things, uh, one of my fun fact things there is that we have a woman who's actually pregnant. So they have to practice on and get, having this woman give birth. So I think that's pretty much a fun fact, right? And then um, there's some other rooms where our students can practice on taking vitals and things of that nature. So can you imagine walking into a room, seeing all of these bodies and they all are called by names and you see all of these students practicing them and one day you might see them in your hospital nearby you. So that's a fun fact to me. So important to get that hands-on experience. And finally, Terrence from the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga. Okay, so I try to stick with the football thing. Seemed like we was rolling with that one, so I, I definitely include ours. So we do this thing called Mox Flock Finley. So we make sure our entire freshman class or as many freshman students who are willing to come to the game uh, run out on the field for our first home game before our football team comes out. So that's a pretty cool experience, and it's super exciting for our freshman students. So this time for real, we're going to talk about best advice. So Megan, would you like to share some of your advice um, with our students online and their parents about going through the college search process? Yes, first, listen carefully. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> um, but no, definitely just know all of your options for sure. Like if you have a question, research it. If you, um, you know, if you have questions, like go, go to visits, go do virtual tours, like know everything that there is to know. That way, when you go to make a, make a choice, like even if you are one of those people who is going to use a school, like you might use this as a stepping stone, stepping stone to go somewhere else then you'll know like what you want to do, where you want to go, and how you can shape your experience to be exactly what you want for your path. All right. So um, I think that oftentimes there is so much focus, and that's all the family wants to talk about is where are you going to go to college and what are you going to major in? And, and it just, it can really stress a student out. And so what I try to recommend to students and their families is to have kind of a, a dedicated time to talk about college. Okay, we're going to cover this now, and then we're going to set it aside for a little while, because otherwise it just gets, it just, it consumes and the people get stressed out. My other piece of advice would be to have a dedicated email that you check on a regular basis. We don't mail a lot of information. And so um, I, you know, students will say, why, why haven't you done this? And so if you, if you have a dedicated email that you check, then that way you're not missing out on opportunities for visitation or um, information that universities and colleges send um, through that. So um, that would be my piece of advice. All right. So I'm also going to cheat and use two pieces because I think the first one is probably for all of us here. So use your admissions counselor, ask us questions. We're here every step of the way to literally help you with anything and everything. Um, I never use my admissions counselor and I wish that I would have because all the students that I've created relationships with are so successful in college. So use, use admissions counselors. 
Um, and the other one is probably one that you guys are doing right now is look early. Start the college search process early if possible. Don't save it till your senior year around October. Like you're just gonna stress yourself out. So go ahead and start getting an idea. Use this summertime um, to go ahead and start looking at different colleges and universities you might be interested in. Right, so for Gwinnett Technical College, I would say, um, as um, as she just stated, make sure you um, just talk with your recruiters on, on campus. We have um, several different recruiters on campus, so make sure that you're having conversation with your student recruiters, making sure that you're following up on what's needed, what's missing on your application. As um, someone else already stated, we, we don't mail out correspondence. So check your emails, check your um, status on the on the on the um, forum in which you can do so, um, because that's important to make sure you're keeping up to date about what's needed and what's required for you and what's missing from your application. So make sure that you're doing that. And then the other thing I would say is, um, if you're not sure about what exactly you're wanting to do, um, talk with your enrollment advisor once you get enrolled in school. Or right, once you get accepted, because again, this is a great forum or a great place for you to be able to get that additional information about what you might want to do or have some more information about the different programs that are, that are being offered at any school that you might be interested in attending. So those will be my, that would be my advice to you. And just one more thing to add, and I know Camilla will also agree with me on this. Parents, if you are on the line right now, and I'm sure any recruiter on this line will tell you now, this is a great opportunity to empower your student and to empower your child to take responsibility of their own application because these are tools that they are going to need that's going to help them make them successful when it comes to applying to college and knowing what the process is like. So, you know, we love you like good cooked food, but when you call us, looking about your child's application, we have to talk to the student. So it's very important that you encourage them. Hey, what's going on with your application? Follow up what's going on, just like Camilla mentioned as well. So my piece of advice is to have unbiased fun as you go through the search process. And that just means, you know, don't ask different colleges different questions because it tends to sway your decision about that college. So if you're asking it about a specific major, what kind of traditions you have on campus, if you have parties on campus, like ask the college all the same questions so you get a more holistic idea of what college maybe is for you or what college maybe is not as exciting as you would have thought it would be. So with that being said, have unbiased fun like as you search for your college. And if you have questions, we can answer them. And it truly is a special time where you can have some fun. Um, you're going to pick your new home and um, these professionals on the screen are going to help you do that um, throughout your process. So thank you so much for joining us tonight. As you close out, there'll be a quick four question survey uh, that will appear. We hope that you'll provide us with some feedback. The recording of this session, along with all the other recordings that happened um, throughout the evening, will be available within a week at strivescan.com slash probe. With that, have a good one, everyone, and good luck with that college search process. Bye, everyone.